Hello and welcome to this iNav quick tip. Now this is a quick tip that's actually part of this community build. I'm putting iNav on an F405 in a mini drack as just something to do while we're all locked in as part of the coronavirus outbreak. Now I'm going to be maidening it very shortly so I'm doing the final bits of prep for that maiden video now that the lockdown here as I'm recording this in the UK is hopefully starting to lift a little bit. However, one of the things that I was looking uh, for on my channel that I realized I didn't have was a quick and easy video on how you calibrate the ESC in something like a fixed wing. And I know lots of you are starting to build fixed wings with iNav and it is a fantastic way to fly. Now, we as a community have kind of forgot, a lot of us, how you do ESC calibration. And the reason for that is that with the modern BL Heli ESCs and others that we have in our multi-rotors and using things like D-Shot, we no longer need to calibrate. But back in the dim, dark days of regular ESCs that don't have things like digital protocols like D-Shot where calibration isn't required, we're kind of back in those woods with a lot of the fixed wing ESCs. So I'm putting this video to show you how to do that. If you remember the days of NASI32, old style Simon K ESCs, no, this is going to be new to you. But if you've come into the hobby over the last two or three years as I'm recording the video, this is probably something you might not have seen. Now, the trick and reason that we calibrate ESCs is that the ESC, unless you tell it, will have an arbitrary throttle zero and throttle 100% position. And those are a PWM value. Now, the pulse width modulation or the pulse that you send to the ESC to tell it how much throttle that you want can be anything between about 970 up to about a value of 2100. So it's quite a range, but normal ESCs will operate in the range of about 1000 to 2000. Those are the values for the channel. Now, what you need to do to make sure this is working is you need to set, tell the ESC what your minimum is so it knows that, but also what the maximum is so that your ESC is exactly in lockstep with your throttle channel as it comes out of the iNav flight controller. Now, this is actually pretty easy to do. All you need to do is make sure you've got a charge battery handy, make sure your prop is off. We're going to spin the motor and you also need to have your iNav console handy. So let me go to the desk and go through this process. It's relatively straightforward. There aren't too many gotchas. So here on the bench, we've got everything ready to go and please make sure that you haven't got your prop on. We are going to spin the motor. Now I've got my radio turned on here. That's just force of habit. You don't need your radio on for this, but we are going to have it plugged in without the main battery power being plugged in to iNav because we need to set the throttle channel uh, to the high position before we plug the power in and that will tell the ESC when it receives that high signal that it's time to calibrate. So we need to go into the output section. This was where, if you remember, we set things like the ESC protocol and stuff. Now, because we're on standard, this is why we're having to change everything. This is also, if you remember, we came in here, did a live mode in the series. This is also where we did things like reversing the servos and things. But we're not there this time. We're actually going to do this stuff with the motors. Now, you can't do this accidentally you have to actually say that you understand all these problems and read the warning and click on this little button when that's there you can raise the throttle to its maximum position with it like that so that the iNav system is outputting maximum throttle we're going to plug in the battery and we're going to wait for the ESC to finish beeping And then as soon as it's finished beeping, we're going to drop the throttle straight away down to the lowest value. And there should be a confirmation tone. And that should be good. And we'll know if it's working because if we raise the throttle now, as soon as we start to raise it, we should get a nice smooth motor rotation. In fact, if I lift it up a little bit, we can see uh, which direction it's going. I need to just double check that when I fit the prop. So now that's done and everything else, if you're watching the rest of the series, we're ready to go to the field. I will do one last video showing the Maiden. So stay tuned for that. 
Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.